So I'm here today with Felipe Hoffa, um, who some of you, if you are in the um, sequel summer camp week one, you may recognize from his uh, very flattering story about how he got a zero on a sequel test uh, in college. Uh, but now you work with SQL pretty much full time, right? Yeah, SQL is my favorite language just because I love data. And do you want to tell me a little bit about your your story? So I know that you're from Chile, and then you got into engineering. Um, in was that in uh, undergrad or high school, or how did you get interested in, in databases? Sure. So first, uh, you start in high school. Uh, I had my first computer. If you want to date me, it was an Atari eight hundred XL. And then I always kept, uh, my father always kept me around computers. That was really cool. So going to study, starting to study engineering and then specializing in computer science was like a natural path for what I could do well. Now databases, when I was in college, I was sure that databases or being a DBA was not in my future. And you were slightly yeah. wrong about that, would you say? When I was, in college, when I had the database class, when I had the SQL midterm, I got a zero because I just wasn't able to remember any of the syntax. And I we were not allowed notes to, to bring our notes to this test. So it was just like, you know what? I'm not up for the embarrassment. I will leave this place and get a zero. That's better than getting <laughs> than doing badly. I didn't do that badly in the database class just because they, for future tests, I complained and they let us use notes and with notes I was able to do a lot. But I wasn't really interested in databases until I had my first job. Mm. And being able to just have a database and start asking real questions with, not just theor like example questions. Now I was dealing with real data and I wanted to learn from this data. Then I started discovering the power of SQL. Yeah, when you've got, you know, you do need to know how many people like on, on Kaggle wrote a kernel last month and how many used Python and how many used R. And it's extremely important that you have that information right now. It's a lot more uh, concrete. Exactly. I don't want to learn SQL. I want to find the answers to questions. Like, yeah, how many people on Kaggle completed the, the challenge? Mm. And then, well, SQL is a way to get there. Yeah. SQL itself is not the reward. The reward is getting answers to your questions. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel very, very similarly. Um, but I actually had a question that, so again, I'm not super interested in the tool of SQL. I'm more interested in the data that I can get out of it. Um, and I know you work on, on BigQuery, which is a relational database hosting system, management system. It's a... Uh, Data warehouse in the cloud where you have to manage nothing and it's all about you are allowed to put your data in, you are allowed uh, to use data that other people have shared with you, so you don't even have to put that in. Just, uh, if someone shares data publicly or just with you, then you can access it. And, and then it's all about the queries. You are allowed to write questions and not think about pre-planning or indexes or how this database has been collected, you just think about what questions do I have? And BigQuery is uh, usually able to answer it in seconds. What I know about BigQuery is that it's especially good for big data and it's especially fast. And I was wondering if you could tell me about sort of like what else is out there in this space? Because um, I've never like gone shopping for a system to do this. It's just the engineers have built something. I will use the thing that the engineers I worked with built. Um, and I like I don't know what else is out there. So the question is what else is as an alternative to BigQuery. Yeah, yeah. And how are they? How are they different from each other? Yeah. So most people have experienced uh, their own having their own database. Uh, many start by downloading MySQL or something like that, and um, that's really cool. You can install it in your computer. You can put your data inside. You can start asking questions. Uh, then, if you are developing an application, you will probably have a database at the back end, and then. Uh, your application, you will optimize your application so it solves uh, inserts, deletes, updates very quickly. But then it starts a part when you start having questions. When to when you want to go through the whole database looking for some special patterns, 
and then traditional databases are not that good because they are really good when you know that uh, you need to find a row or a group of rows and then you just define indexes and that makes them really really fast they ask, give you answers in less than a second but then if you want to go through the whole table if you want if you have I don't know, 300 gigabytes of data in your database and you want to analyze half of it, then your database will start sweating. Either if it's in your own computer, uh, your computer will take hours, or even worse, if you have an application and you have this whole, um, you I mean, people develop these great uh, environments and they have everything optimized and they're saving customers and then someone comes with questions and your main database is not optimized to do that mm. your main database uh, is serving a thousand or a million customers at the time and then you want to use half of its resources just to answer one question um that's not good like, a lot of people find that problem and uh, usually I ask the question, so when I'm in front of an audience, so who, who knows SQL? A lot of hands raise that. And then I ask them, OK, so who has had, had to wait a week or a day or hours to get an answer? And people have been in that, in that uh, spot. And then the question is, well, how do we solve that? Mm. How do I take you out from your operational really quick database into one that into a space where you can go over the whole data set without waiting a uh, whole night to get an answer. I think you bring up something that I didn't realize when I was coming, because my, my background is academia and my, my experience with databases was very research-based. So somebody somebody's lab hosts a database, you run a query, you get your query, you walk away. Um, and what I didn't realize when I came into industry is that the same database that you as a data scientist are running queries on and trying to get data from is also the database everyone needs to use the website. So if I'm running queries against Kaggle, um, everyone who is using Kaggle also is using those same resources. So we have to be careful that we're you know, optimizing carefully and not being like, hey, let's touch everything in the database and also shuffle it around. And other people are also trying to use it. Um, which was, you don't want your database administrator yelling at you, please stop doing whatever you're doing. <laughs> It's just like bursting through the door, whatever you're doing, no more of that. So I wonder if you have any tips for, for someone who maybe has more of a data science background, like how do you avoid getting yelled at? How a lot of businesses resolve this is first, they get part of the databases. Let's have our production databases and let's have one for the researchers. But then researchers start competing for, for resources. And so traditional databases allow you to add indexes. Uh, so then uh, you end up with a committee deciding which indexes we can add because our researchers are asking us for more indexes and then we, we cannot just put all of them. So we need meetings and you need to prove that you want it. Or this is where BigQuery has changed a lot of how people see this place is just put your data in BigQuery. BigQuery uh, doesn't need indexes. So, and BigQuery doesn't, it's not constrained by resources per se, like it works at Google scale. So basically people can go and ask any questions uh, because it's able to just go through the data without having to optimize it first for certain type of questions. So when you mentioned um, indexes, are these indexes like, Again, my my yeah. SQL knowledge is like very patchy and just like I've learned how to do the things I need to do. Um, so would indexes be like in a data frame and pandas or uh, R or like row numbers in Excel? An index would be the, the question of how do I prepare this data mm -hmm. so it can answer to your questions quickly. You have a lot of physical files mm -hmm. or books and you want to find a book quickly. Um, how do you organize your books? One way to organize your books quickly, to find your books quickly, is let's put all of our books in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. So then if you give me the title, I can go straight to where the book is instead of having to look through the whole collection. That's the first way to organize data. How do I place it physically? 
Mm. But then if you want to search books by author, that doesn't work anymore. Then you have to go through your whole set of books again. But then what you do is you build an index mm. that says, I have my alphabetical list of authors here. And for each one of their books, I can be like, Oh, this book is in 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 this shelf. This book is in this other shelf. So before going to your whole collection of books to look for a book, you go to your index. You see, oh, uh, Michael Sheldon book X is in shelf three, and then you can get that book very quickly. So you don't have to scan everything. You can sort of like narrow the range that you're scanning in, so that it's much faster to do things. Exactly. So then the question becomes, how do you want to search for things? Mm. Like, uh, you want to get to have a index, a list of short books. You want, want to have a list of books by uh, color. <laughs> you want to have a book by. There's so many, many, many ways to organize things, mm. and you build these indexes and build this in thinking of. Okay, how are people going to ask me questions later? Because there is there must be some overhead to, you know, figuring out the indexes in the first place. And you can't have, you know, you probably don't want to have if you have 4000 attributes or whatever, every single attribute has its own index, because that could, you know, take a while to do and some some time and space to store. Exactly. Let's say you have a million books outside this room. Mm and you want to retrieve all of the books that mention the word cow. Mm -hmm. How would you do it? One way is if someone had built an index of every word, and then you can be like, oh, I know. This, this is the file for cow, and this is all the books it's in. But first, you have to build that index. Otherwise, you have to go outside, and you have to go through the million books, searching line by line, uh, looking for that's this book, cow, cow. And that will take you ages. Unless uh, you're using a database like BigQuery, mm -hmm. uh, which has the capacity of reading the million books line by line and do it very quickly. Like, And that's what's different. A traditional database doesn't have that capacity, doesn't have the ability to go through a million books line by line, searching for whatever question you figured out just now. Well, it, BigQuery will go and read every book and written very quickly. And that's because at Google, we learned how to parallelize these things. Instead of having one person reading every book, we have a million computers reading each book in parallel very quick. Like you would in machine learning, if you're training a neural net, training on a CPU is going to take a lot longer than if you can parallelize and train on, you know, maybe even several GPUs or a TPU. Exactly. The key is having in, in, the, in our Google scale is having thousands of servers available to fill up, fill up up our task, and then also having a very, very fast network that allows you to move the data very quickly. Um, just to use a keyword, it's a petabit scale, bisectional, petabit bisectional bandwidth database that people normally don't have at home or even in their own data center. Yeah, I, I don't think Kaggle had that before, uh, before the acquisition, for sure. Oh, yes. Uh, it's been great to build things together. But Kaggle could have had have that uh, before being acquired by Google, because we have Google Cloud and everyone is allowed to use our infrastructure. They just need to know that this is available, um, the kind of things they can do. Yeah, that makes sense. That helps me helps me contextualize. Yeah. I, I don't want to keep you too, too long because I know you've got a lot of travel this week. Um, is there anything that you're you're working on that you'd like to share with the Kaggle community or uh, a fun blog post you've read recently or just anything you want to bring up? So, well, first I have to say that it makes me super happy uh, to know that Kaggle users through the notebooks have straight access to BigQuery, so you are uh, solving this problem. Like until now, people have been able to access certain tables in BigQuery, and Kaggle has only that. some of the public data sets. But if you had your own data in BigQuery, you couldn't get to it from Kaggle. Yeah, exactly, and I have problems like, oh, I'm making this other data set public, but Kaggle has not whitelisted it, so I cannot use it from Kaggle. No, we don't have that problem anymore. And so now, oh, problems I want to solve. Mm -hmm. This this I'm doing with uh, my own, I'm, I'm running my own experiment of collecting every meetup.com RSVP. Oh, wow. Yes, so I'm learning how to, uh, what's happening around the world, how people 
are in real time are doing RSVPs and what are they interested in, what countries we be using this. And there's so much interesting data. And so I want to soon publish a post that tells the story of how I'm able to collect this data so other people can collect it too. Meetup.com has an API that makes this really, really easy. You can stream the data to be query. I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to share this data, mm -hmm. but at least I can teach people how they can do their own copy out of it out of the source that is fascinating i can think of a lot of um different like sociological questions and sort of like looking at what groups grow very quickly or if an in-group starts to decline uh, for those of people who may not be familiar meetup is a website that lets people basically set up meetings with strangers uh as groups i don't know is that a good explanation <laughs> so there's a there's a couple big meetups um here in seattle our ladies which is for ladies who do R that i'm one of the organizers of um there's a big Python language meetup where people can meet and talk about Python. So this is really interesting uh, to see how all these communities are. Yeah, and there are communities around tech, there are communities around having fun, there are communities about, around meditation. And you can find, oh, what's the best city to find people um, doing meetups around meditation that's in between Seattle and San Francisco? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can end up in Portland or maybe we will end up in a different place depending on what our questions are. Another interesting blog post that I have coming up is how to do reverse geocoding. Now, let's say a lot of people have IP addresses. They have their own web server. Uh, a web server to work needs to uh, use IP addresses and collect them as, as part of the logs mm -hmm. to know what's happening, to know if there is any abuse. And the question is, how can you transform these IP addresses into geolocations, into mm -hmm. cities or countries? to know where people are coming from. I have a, an old blog post that solves this problem with BigQuery, mm -hmm. but I have a new coming up that solves this problem with the latest advances in BigQuery, and it's really quickly, and I'm really proud, and I hope we'll publish it very soon. And then that's sort of like the inverse of regular geocoding, where you have an address and you need to turn it into, um, you know, the latitude and longitude. Same exactly. for plotting. In this case, it's how do, I, how do I transform a million visitors into my website from IP addresses that and mm -hmm. also have uh, all the challenge of that an IP address uh, might be considered personal data. Let's exchange these IP addresses for something that is not personal data, but at the, at the same time, way more meaningful and valuable for us. Like, let's figure out uh, what cities have the most number of uh, Kaggle users coming to this website. Yeah, that sounds fascinating. Both of those blog posts sound really interesting. I'll, I'll keep my, my eyes peeled for them. Oh, I, be, I will be waiting for your retweet. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, 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 okay. You can read them and then you can consider if the Kaggle community will co benefit from them or not. I definitely think people would be uh, super interested in the, the meetups. It's my, my, my gut and sake. Maybe next time I will show you a dashboard that I built that you can yes. ask any of these questions, how fascinated people are with meetups in different places and where people are doing machine learning more and what are the topics that attract most of the people. I have a dashboard ready. I wish I had it right now to show it. But yeah, I can it can... We help uh, designing like the perfect meetup talk. We could do some predictions of what are the most uh, interesting, like how many RSVPs will a meetup get for certain topics? That would be yeah. really, and also like helpful for meetup users. All right. I, don't sure. wanna, uh, I don't wanna keep you too long because I know we're both gonna get kicked out of our rooms. Uh, but thank you so much for talking with me today. Uh, sure. I had a lot of fun and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your blog post and I hope this was uh, helpful for, for our Kaggles. Thank you for having me. Congratulations of embracing BigQuery even more than before. <laughs> and if anyone wants to talk with me, I am at, at Felipe Hoffa on Twitter. I'll try to remember to, to post the link in the, in the YouTube video when this goes up. And if anyone has BigQuery questions, we love answering them on Stack Overflow. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, Felipe.